Welcome to fixing our relationship with the animal kingdom. I am going to be directly channeling the Elfian healers of the animal kingdom, the Elfian animal healers, specifically the elder of that group of Elfians. Uh, they gave me some crystals to kind of talk about before I get started. Uh, so the first one um, being serpentine and then spirit selenite and golden healer quartz. They elected these crystals to be the ones to help you connect to the rhyme. Well, Rhyme, rhythm, and reason. Uh, the reason is the purpose, the rhyme is the communication, and the rhythm is how we all flow together, is our connections to each other. And within that, they also called forth the Lepidolite to be an anchoring of all higher lights. Because we have higher lights, and there is higher lights um, within the animal kingdom as well. So bringing forth the Lepidolite as that anchoring of higher light, and also a crystalline connection that you can call on to anchor to higher light as well. And also it's really good for clearing the mind. So we'll get started with the channeling. So I'm going to call forth the uh, Divine Feminine uh, Elfian Animal Healer. And she's going to to give the whole class and maybe ask if you have questions too, uh, but she's very excited to be delivering this class to all of you. Hello, I am the Divine Feminine Elfian Animal Healer Elder, the head Elfian Animal Healer, and I'll explain a little bit about what we are because we're different than the other uh, eternal loving friends. Uh, our domain specifically does do more work with the animal kingdom. We were elected to, more like I ascended into specifically, um, to work with the animal kingdom because we realized that the ascension of the earth isn't just dependent on the humans, but also the animals. And that there are animals that come from the gray area, the positive polarity, and there are negative manifestations as well. So to have that understanding of knowing how we can help and then help humans heal that relationship. Now, I don't know if all of you in here are familiar or listening are familiar with the Atlantean Age, but basically what caused the fall was experimentation mainly on the animal kingdom and humans a little bit too, but the experimentation on animal life and really treating them as lesser than, which they are still souls. They have a group soul where you have individual souls. That is one of the main differences. But in reality, you guys all experience a, a reason, a rhyme, and a rhythm. Both humans and animals have a purpose. The difference is, is that the animals and their group soul, their group soul has a purpose, and then the little forms of them try to complete the little purpose and mission. With you all, you all have your individual. That does stem from one original purpose, but has its own individuality. They can have their different individualities, but not in the same way as humans can. Different splits can have individuality. There's so many kinds of different group souls within the animal kingdom. But you all communicate. You all have your rhyme. You all have your way of communicating. And you all have your rhythm, the way that you connect with one another. Truly harmonious connections. Eternal loving friendship. What we do is we work with them, but we learn how can we help humanity as well. Because in a way, humans are animals, but not animals in the sense of group soul animals, but you are beings of the tree of life and you are existing as children of the earth and children of the sky, just like the animals are. So we learned one, we can help you understand your soul tribes. Two, we can help you understand the rhyme, rhythm, and reason as well. And three, we can help you understand your animal connections. Because the animal kingdom and the crystalline energy offer you a multitude of connections to help assist you in your journey. And they're all specific, most of them, to each lifetime. So it changes every lifetime. And that is a connection that's not often paid attention to. And the crystalline connections can come to you later. The animal connections are not really talked about as much, but they have been communicated in other cultures and in other traditions. So I want to start by talking about the different animal connections and then explain a little bit about the rhyme, rhythm, and reason and maybe get into calling your soul tribes too. Because when you connect more with the animal kingdom and heal your relationship with them, if you have any fears, phobias, or anxieties in regards to them, or just opening your, yourself up to connecting to your animal connections, you are starting to call forth your soul tribe. So first is the kinship. Kinship animals or crystals, it depends on the soul. So not everyone has a kinship animal, not everyone has a kinship crystal. Um, most souls in this room do have a kinship animal. 
kinship animals are the group soul that does exist on your soul star origins. So basically it is an animal soul whose mission and purpose, its reason is something that is in alignment with yours as your original soul, ex original soul excellence. <laughs> So those animal connections specifically or crystalline connections are a direct reflection of your soul and its authenticity and a direct reflection of what you're meant to do. Those connections are the most fun because they are talked about the least. So it's the most fun to talk about. <laughs> With those connections, they can help offer you a lot of support. With your kinship animals specifically, um, but also kinship crystals, they will find you in extra extraordinary ways. It could be the animal that you fear the most, <laughs> funnily enough, that's, that's the case for our communicator, um, but it also could just be the animal you constantly keep seeing everywhere. It's gonna make its presence known to you in a loud way, letting you know, hey, we are deeply connected. With your other animal connections, uh, talk about those. First, kinship animals never change and kinship crystals never change in any lifetime. So those are always remaining uh, as the one similar connection. The other one that doesn't change is your messenger guide. So there are messengers of the veil. Um, the leader of the messengers of the veil are crows actually. And crows are not bringers of death, they are communicators beyond the veil. So we'll clear that just because you see one does not mean someone's going to die. It can mean transformation, but also can mean they have a message. The messengers of the veil, ladybugs, dragonflies, hummingbirds, and small birds are messengers of the veil. In rare cases, also starfishes <laughs> as well. Um, for specific types of souls, they have a starfish. So you have the messenger guide. The messenger guide is a soul that actually originally started off as a human soul that then chooses to come forth and communicate to you through a messenger of the veil which is a small bird, hummingbird, dragonfly, uh, ladybug, or it could be a starfish too. <laughs> so that connection specifically isn't on a group soul level necessarily. It's just being aware of the messages coming to you. So when you see that connection, you got a message for you. And so with healing that relationship is not freaking out every time you see a ladybug and thinking you need to kill it and running away when a hummingbird flies near you or uh, freaking out at all the birds pecking away at everything. And it's healing that of seeing them as a pest and more of seeing them as a message, seeing them as they have a purpose and they're coming to tell you something. So don't kill the messenger. Praying mantises come a lot to deliver messages. You don't believe how many, even spiders come to deliver messages. There's a lot of different bugs that come forth to deliver messages and they're not coming to bug you. They just have a message for you. So it's kind of healing that and not seeing it as this, there are some negative manifestations, which I really don't want to talk about those very much, but uh, a lot of them are either gray area or positive polarity that have a message for you. So seeing them less as an inconvenience and more as this beautiful part of nature is a great way to fix the relationship the animal kingdom is just to see the beauty of this is nature and we exist together and even with healing your relationship with the weather because that's a thing too and a lot of humans like it's snowing no it's raining no when there are messages that are coming to tell you something to see that there is truth and there is beauty and there is messages and there is lessons and everything now the other crystalline, crystalline, not crystalline, I was talking about, I was talking about crystals or crystals below me, animals. <laughs> and it is related to the crystals because they give you crystals too. So it's sometimes distracting when there are crystals on the ground because they also talk and they're trying to tell the communicator, hey, I have this message, I have this message, I have this message. Nope, it's about the animals today. Um, you have your soul spirit animal and your spirit animal gives you a soul crystal. You have your totem animal that gives you an ascension crystal and you have your power animal that gives you a strength crystal. So they do give you a crystalline energy to support and help you in your journey, but this is about the animals, so shh, okay. <laughs> your spirit animal specifically is your spirit guide from the animal kingdom. So the Elfian realm gives you a guide, you have a guardian angel, so there is support from all realms, including the animal kingdom too. So your spirit animal typically will be the first animal you see if you ever go into a Reiki session, if you ever go into a meditation, it will come forth trying to guide you. It'll tell you, hi, 
I am here to guide you. And the most common uh, spirit animals do tend to be birds just because they can fly and guide you. But a lot of times they also are uh, amphibians, they are marine life, they can be absolutely anything. And they're a representation of you on your journey, stepping into yours spiritual power and embracing your authenticity and guiding you into understanding who you are in the physical because there are messages in the traits that they possess, the qualities of who they are as a soul, but also in the physical form. They can help you understand who you are in the physical. And they offer forth your soul crystal that can help you stay in alignment with your authenticity. They remain the same in almost every lifetime and rare cases do they ever change. The two that change in every lifetime are your power and totem. And totem and power animals have been communicated before and have often been communicated as the same thing which they are two vastly different things. Power animals specifically are the animal connection that help you connect to your strength, can help you connect to your power, help you connect to who you are when you are standing in all of your energy, and help you call back missing soul fragments, help you call back your energy, and help you when you're starting to establish boundaries, help you when you are stepping into who you are as a soul and the physical as well, um, but specifically with boundaries and understanding um, your power. So you can connect to them when you need support with that. And they'll often come to you at the time when you are feeling at the lowest to help remind you of the beauty of your soul. And each lifetime, it changes to offer you assistance for what you need to learn in each lifetime. So for example, and if a previous lifetime, you were angry all the time, in this lifetime, you will have a power animal that is coming forth as something tranquil or peaceful because in this lifetime, you need to learn peace and also your strength comes from your peace as well. So there's two different meanings within it. Your totem animal connection is your ascension animal and they give you the ascension crystal. It is the animal connection that works with your ascension guides. That just helps you on your journey and is a totem of what you will become when you start stepping into your ascended self. So your ascended self is something you're all starting to step into more and how we've noticed even zodiac astrology wise that your ascended sign starts to be more of what you are because as you keep ascending, you start stepping into new energy. And so typically totem animals won't make their presence known until you're at a significant shift within your life. So that's those connections, knowing what they are. And I can see a lot of different animals and different types, so you can get more specific. They'll come and find you too if you ask them. Um, I sense someone has a frog as an animal connection in one way or another. Uh, there is a dolphin, there is a starfish. I see a whale, I see a lion, I see so many different kinds and they do so many different things. And if you look past what they physically do in nature to survive and see more of what they represent as a soul, that will help offer a little bit more clarity. Because you can think, an owl goes in the night and it cleanses and it cleans and it eats all the rodents. Well, that's not, that's not what I do. How is that my power animal? What does it represent? It represents wisdom. It represents intuition and knowledge. It represents connection and balance between the moon and the sun. It represents the balance between and cleansing and removing stagnity and lower energy and stepping into positive light. So if you look at the spiritual representation of it, you have a higher understanding of also yourself. So the rhyme, rhythm, and reason. Reason is mission and purpose. So when we're working with animals specifically, we work to remind them of their mission and purpose because sometimes they can forget too, just as you do. So for you, understanding your reason is understanding your inspiration. So your inspiration can be found in nature. A lot of times your inspiration will call to you when you are standing in the wind, you're standing in the sun, when you are connecting to the world around you. Not the material world, but the earthly world, which are two very different things. And the earthly world can inspire you to awaken that seed within you and pull you forward into the path that's meant for you. And your purposes all have this one thing in common, to spread love and light, to be a being of life, experience life, and understand life. And it's how you go about experiencing life. It's how you go about spreading love. It's how you go about understanding connections with others. That's your inspiration. And that becomes what is the bigger purpose that you have. Your missions, your missions are how you complete your purpose. So oftentimes mission and purpose are thrown around interchangeably, but they are two different things. Your mission is how you complete your purpose. And you have multiple missions, you have one purpose that it can change if you complete it. 
and you can choose so many different kinds once you complete and keep going and keep going and keep going. You're like, oh, I keep coming back to Earth, keep, keep coming back to Earth, why? Well, here's why. Because you are beings of life, when you experience life, you teach us about life. When we be inspiration, we teach you about inspiration. So when you are experiencing life and you're going through that earth school and you're learning and you're learning and you're learning all of these new things, you are being a being of life and so you're on purpose. And even when you choose to ascend and maybe not incarnate in the physical and be a guide or do something else, it, you are still being on purpose to experience life. And you are also beings of free will too. You have that powerful potential within you where you have the free will to choose your life. Even when you make your plan before you enter the lifetime, you come into it and oftentimes you choose and you change everything. So the most important lesson and to undo the influence of the experimentation of taking away free will is to continue to choose your free will and to embrace your ability to choose your destiny, to choose who you are and to choose the path that resonates with you. Learning to find what resonates is a key to understanding the rhythm of the universe and the rhythm of how you connect with others and the animal kingdom. When we work with the rhythm, we work to help the boundaries. So sometimes you watch nature and you see the symbiotic relationship. And that's something that the creator worked to create for the animals to flow in harmony. But sometimes there are things going on in the earth that can knock them out of balance, that can remove them from their habitat. So we come forth working with Archangel Ariel specifically, she works with the animal kingdom, to help remind them of their boundaries and how they flow with each other even when they're pulled out of their natural environment. And remind them how as a soul they can connect as well. You can remind them to do that. We are doing it now as beings of inspiration to inspire them to, but also to inspire you guys as well. There's a specific group of human souls that are called animal whisperers, who are also referred to as children of the earth, and they are souls that can work to communicate with the animals and can work to help people understand the relationship with the animals, but also to help heal them too, because they do a lot of work. For example, cats, owls, and snakes are cleansers of the earth. So they go and they cleanse and they remove a lot of negativity. So if you have a cat and it comes in and it rubs its legs around you after a hard day at work, it's removing negativity. Dogs are bringers of love and joy and help heal the sacral chakra. So if you have cords of attachment, negativity, stress, anxiety, and you're crying and, you're, and the dogs just keep coming up and approaching you, they're trying to bring you love. And so they are trying to be on purpose, but then they absorb things too. So being that support of them, you absorb something for me, let's, let's help clear and cleanse you too, because they don't know how to do that themselves. They don't have the same type of consciousness that you all have too. But when you start seeing you're doing this purpose, you're, you're helping me and I, I feel so much better, you're healing me. So we're animal healers, we work to heal the animals, but there are animal healers that are animals that are healers. Each chakra that you have has an animal that can help. Your root chakra, rabbits work with ley lines. And your root chakra and where you're rooted too. Dogs help the sacral, lions help the solar plexus. Your heart chakra, elephants can help. Your throat chakra, parrots, funnily enough. And your third eye, owls. Butterflies help your crown because it's messengers. Divine Gateway, the swans. And then you have starfish and you have jellyfish and you have belugas and you have horses that all help different things. Horses are like the grounders and activators of your earth star. So if any of you guys have ridden horses, your earth star opened, your earth star chakra opened wide up. They all have this ability to offer a specific thing to help you. And when you're feeling like you're lacking something, you don't have to physically go to them. You can call on their energy to help you too. Or if you have a totem or you have a crystal carving or something where you can connect to them and their energy, it can help you a lot. And that helps with the rhythm of that relationship and that truly harmonious connection with them and with the planets and with the weather and everything and understanding that you're both here, both you, humans, and animals are here to be beings of the earth, but also to help take care of the earth and to help the earth ascend higher. So with the rhyme is the communication and the way that they communicate and can be understood is different because they don't speak English, although it'd be nice if they would. Um, they communicate in different ways and it could be just simply through touching you. It could be through barking at something and letting you know, hey, 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 hey. Or it could just be by choosing to not be outside because they can sense the rain coming. And so they're telling you rain is coming and I'm not outside running around. They have different ways of communicating to you, communicating to the earth and communicating to each other. And the communication chakra of the earth 
comes from the weather, but also when you all communicate with each other. So when you're open to receiving the messages of each other, you activate the throat chakra of the earth. So when you're open to receiving the messages from the animals and they're open to receiving the messages from you too, you help activate the throat chakra of the earth because the earth feels happy when the beings that live on the earth are getting along with each other. And there has been a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff going on within the physical reality that's been creating a divide between humans and animals. It's scared, scared of sharks, scared of lions. They're gonna eat me, they're gonna do this. And there's a lot of fear. Fear creates division. So choosing love and choosing to see the soul within an animal, even if it's one that is a negative manifestation, <laughs> it still has a soul, it's still doing something, it's doing something a little bit lower and it's running around and being pesty, but even so, it has a soul and it has a purpose and it's doing something. Even gray area, like the chipmunks, they're considered gray area because they don't have a higher, higher purpose, but when the earth ascends, they're gonna clear those ley lines. They have something that they're gonna do. They have something that they're gonna do to help. And so even negative manifestations, which are technically mice and rodents and things that came as a result of the experimentation, they're actually still doing a purpose because they are being a symbol of this is the experimentation. They are telling you experimentation, there's something negative, they can deliver a message of there's something negative going on. So if one's coming into your home, it could be a message there's something negative going on. Even though, yeah, <laughs> even though, yeah, they started to exist because of the experimentation as the earth trying to create something to do with that energy, to do with that negative energy that happened from deceit, that happened from lies, that happened from betrayal. And so it has that message. If you see one in a dream, someone could be betraying you. And so there is still a purpose even in them. So seeing that purpose and seeing that soul and choosing to see the soul, that that is how you fix the relationship. Technically, one, one size fits all answer, but it is a great way to start to see the meaning and the beauty of the relationship between the animals and the humans as well, you all. And your beings of life, what are they beings of? Now that that is something that our communicator wonders too. They are beings of the earth. <laughs> Simple, they are angelic mother Gaia's way of giving the earth these creatures that help deliver messages, that help connect to humans. They are a way of the earth speaking, living, breathing, as same way the plants are too, but they also have other realms within them. So within them as being beings of the earth and being existing in the physical too, they have a different realms. The aquatic realm is a different level of the animal kingdom that has its own mission and purpose. There is the Novian realm, which we refer to as the animals that are of service, the collective all. So the healers as well. There is the healers. So they have these different mini realms within the kingdom. And with that, they have different missions and purposes that align with yours. And so the of service to animals, example, the dogs, the uh, healers, example, the elephants, and the aquatic realm that can do different higher things of delivering messages. I mean, everyone's seen that a jellyfish looks like it's an alien. It actually is a way to connect to the galactic neutral, which is balance. So there's a lot of different things. I go through and through every single animal that's ever been existed, but I'm not going to do that. Um, what I can do and what I can offer to you as one final message, because the divine timing, um, Elfie and Elementos are like, okay, 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 let's wrap it up, um, is that if you're seeking to heal that relationship and to find that connection with the animal kingdom, you can first choose love and guidance. So. Ask your, ask your spirit team to guide you to the animals that have a message for you, that you have a connection to, and choose love with what other animals presented to you because it could be a snake. And if it's coming forth to you as your totem animal, don't be turned away by the negative meaning of it. Everything has a positive and negative meaning. Everything has a positive and negative. You're living in a polarity. So the positive side is the positive side, but something that has also negative connotations, negative meaning, that it could be a message of, when you're in your lowest self too. So your totem animal specifically could be an animal that when it isn't in alignment and it's disbalanced and it has these negative qualities like being sneaky or you know, like foxes are very sneaky and sly, uh, when they have that meaning of them too, that could be a sign of what happens when you are out of alignment and those characteristics are what you need to overcome to step into your highest self as well. So even their negative meanings have a message to tell you what you must overcome to step into your highest self. 
So is there any questions? You can throw them out there or just tell our communicator too. I'm sensing more of the processing because it's a lot of stuff. Um, so I am going to say goodbye with these final messages to the collective all watching and turn the attention to the people in this room who attended. So goodbye for now. Stay inspired.